Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Know How is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Take back your internet privacy today. For three months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash knowhow. Today on Know How, we've got news and security hacks and live demos all about IoT. Welcome to Know How. Hello. We are the unindicted co-conspirators of IoT here for yeah, you. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, we are, and today we have a special guest. Yes, that's. You may not have seen this assistant all season long, and that's because this assistant is the only assistant, <laughs> the only speaker with Cortana in it. Yes, far. is it the, really the only one with I Cortana? I believe it's still. It's definitely the most popular. Mm, yes, I would say the one that you can find. And weirdly, both Leo and you offered to give me yours. Just get it to out of get it out of. <laughs> listen, it, it's no shade to Cortana, but when it comes to digital assistance, there is a reason that our first news item is kind of a hot topic this mm -hmm. week, and that's because Cortana has taken on some friends mm -hmm. to help it propagate in this in this world of assistance. And, uh, we introduced Cortana before we introduced ourselves. I am Megan We Marani. did, that's true. And I'm Florence Ion. <laughs> but you know what? Cortana deserved that. She did. We put it on the marquee above us mm -hmm. because that's, that's what we're giving it today. I have to say that she has the most pleasant voice of I any agree. of the assistants. I agree. Well, I mean, she did start in a video game. Mm -hmm, it's true. So, you it, know, yes. it's like getting Vin Diesel to be your assistant mm -hmm, voice. Mm -hmm. But what I've found when I've, mind. when I've been experimenting with her is that pleasantness can be a bit disturbing. Um, I She will give you the news, and for some reason, uh, it, I'll, it gave me the news, and it just mm -hmm. picked out the LA Times in like the worst, darkest stories. Alex, do you have the link to my tweet in there? I think I put it in there. Ah. Um, I recorded her, I just asked her for the news, and she's, this is kind of a spoiler because Cortana is actually coming out of my Amazon Echo Dot, which will explain right. how I did that in a second. Um, but let me know if you have that. From USA Today. Georgia police taser 87-year-old grandmother who is cutting flowers for not following orders. It's disturbing. Yes, it um, is disturbing. Yeah. Uh, I will say that just yesterday I was having a conversation about assistance and how they have sort of been programmed to have that same social contract with us as humans to kind of get us to interact with it. And I find it interesting that Cortana actually tends to be one of the more realistic interactions mm -hmm. that I have. But when it comes to actually doing things, tad bit limited it's in true. terms of integrations mm -hmm. and things of the sort. And I think that's why it's this whole piggybacking mm -hmm. is uh, is happening. Yeah, so they, they formed a partnership. Mm -hmm. You can get um, your Amazon Echo Voice on your Cortana, and you can get Cortana on your um, Echo Dot or your um, Echo Show or whatever, whatever wherever Echo is for you. You can switch them, and it, it's really very easy. You just have to enable a skill, um, and both Cortana and uh, Amazon, the Amazon app will send you the information if you ask. You, you just have to say like enable Cortana or um, enable uh, on your Cortana and then they'll send you the information on how to set it up. Very easy, very easy to do. So well, then, yeah. yeah. So now I'll, I'll talk to my Echo Dot here and I'll mm -hmm. say uh, Echo, enable Cortana. How can I help? Oh. Hello. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that one yet. Of course. We oh, we should probably mute. <laughs> I have no idea how to mute that. For you. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so you, you muted <laughs> it. mid-muted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know the answer to this one, but I'm learning. Cortana, what can I do for you? Shh, read my email. You don't have an email account set up. Show me my calendar. One by going to the notebook in Cortana settings. Yes. And adding an account under connected services. 
So How can I, help you? I tried several times to do that, and I believe that you have to have an Outlook account. Like you have to have like Microsoft Office. I haven't even I haven't even tried that. I'm not able to help with this one yet. I think what the can I, do for you? I think you can use different calendars, but I have not been able to set it up with my Gmail account. Yeah. Understandably, yeah. they want you to have Microsoft Office and use Outlook. That's very Sorry. limiting. I'm not able to help with this one yet. How can I help? Show me my calendar. All right. There isn't anything in your calendar. <laughs> you can add a calendar by going to the notebook in Cortana settings and adding an account under connected services. You know what? What can I do for you? Sing the national anthem. <gasps> oh, yes. I'll sing you the first bit. Oh, say can you Very good singer. Sing? Yeah, she Very really good is. Singer. I think it's worth mentioning. Echo. I think it's... Stop. <laughs> Stop thinking. I think it's worth mentioning that the trouble with Cortana and having it on the Amazon speaker is that there's additional configuration that has to take place for you to really get that added benefit. But if you just want it as a party trick, it's there. Mm -hmm. Now, Alex, who is our technical director yes. today, he is so immersed in the Windows ecosystem that he still carries around his Windows phone and pretends to use it sometimes. It's all pretend. <laughs> it's, all it's all pretend. pretend. Uh, do you use Cortana a lot? You big, no. huge Windows fan? Only, no. only to set reminders. Oh. So, I, yeah. That's you helpful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, if you but if you have if you work in an office, you have your calendar and your Outlook email, and you know you are immersed in the Windows worlds, then I could see how Cortana might be helpful to look at your appointments and read your emails and things like that. Cortana also does a couple of IoT schemes. It is good at the Philips Hue bulbs. Mm -hmm. I use that skill sometimes on my Windows 10 machine, and you know if I'm not if I'm not feeling like talking to Googs, I will talk to. Cortana and mm -hmm. have the lights set. So, but I think it would be more. So let's turn the volume, but the mute, turn the mute yep. off on here. Turn the mute on on there, and then I could say, "Hey, enable to here." Yay! Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. So, by the way, this is a really good speaker, just for what it's worth. If you mm -hmm. see this on sale, you might be interested in it, just because it actually produces some pretty good bassy sound. I mean, it's Harman Kardon owned by Samsung, all those, you know, brands sound really good out of the box. So there is that to it. Now, can you do all the same commands with this version of a I think the idea is eventually me, you'll Albuquerque. be... Albuquerque. <laughs> Look at us. We stopped using our... Eventually you'll be able to. It's, a, it's brand new. It just was announced okay. this week. So you could say, um, Cortana, enable... A it's Play my flash briefing. Sorry, this device does not support flash. Okay, briefing. so we're help you. Uh, buy toilet paper on Amazon. Based on your order history, I found Cottonell Ultra Gentle Care toilet paper. Is that what you use? Double yeah. rolls. Okay. It's twenty six dollars and ninety nine cents from Amazon. For one if roll. If you'd like to hear details, <laughs> just ask. Would you like to buy it? Uh, no, thanks. I swear it's cheaper at Costco. It probably is. <laughs> um, they also yeah. quilted Northern Ultra Plush toilet paper. 24 Supreme Rolls. It's $25.99. You got 48 $1. rolls in the last like one. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. So not surprisingly, she will absolutely let you That's buy things. That's all I can find for toilet paper right now. <laughs> Check your Alexa app for more options. What else can I do for you? Nothing. We're done. We're done here. <laughs> Goodbye. But thank you for your time. I mean, I'm assuming she could play music, too. Yeah, if you set that up. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have come into this problem with some other third-party speakers. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get those out. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I have had, uh, I've noticed that you don't have all the access to all of the commands mm -hmm. that you do with. And I find that to be very interesting. I mean, I'm assuming it's like that intentionally to keep competition. I mean, there's so many different Amazon devices that you can buy, mm -hmm. but seems a little limiting. Well, they specifically said that because this is new, there's some things that you can't do yet. That's fair. That you will be, That's they fair. will be able to, just because you can't do them right now, doesn't mean you're Probably, I mean, it doesn't have data to pull from the way that the app does, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have, like, again, you have to have all that configured mm -hmm. through a separate Cortana app. But it did know, I mean, th th that is the brand of toilet paper I use. 
spoiler alert, I don't know. <laughs> now you know that. Um, so, so it was already connected. But you do have to do some connections. It's more of a quilted northern kind you of thing. You are, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, so the other big news um, is there is a security flaw There's in one flaw. of the devices that we have one recommended. One of the here. best, and one of the best rated Wemo, Wemo is one of the best rated smart plug brands out there. You will go to pretty much any tech site that covers consumer hardware and you will see that this is like a number one for easy, simple home automation. Need a shot of splendor for the end of the day? Ask what time is sunset? I do okay. not Thank need you. a shot of Splendor, <laughs> nor do I need a packet of Splenda. Uh, so apparently, yes, now we've got a security breach on one of America's most favorite outlets. <laughs> uh, yeah, Belkin is a known brand. Um, Wemo, we've recommended many times. Our in-studio guest, Sam, who's here, she says this is what she's mm -hmm. she uses. Um, so what what happened was McAfee discovered that you that a hacker could get access to your Wemo, um, and then they could then get access to your whole network. This is especially dangerous if people are using this on a corporate network, as we talked about this yesterday. Uh, I mean, last week on enterprise IoT, you don't want to just connect anything. Um, it's an unreported buffer overflow for those of you keeping track, um, and it was reported on May 21st. And so it's been a while. Yeah, and McAfee did responsible disclosure, and then now Wemo says they're working with McAfee to um, update it and fix it, and should have a firmware update within a month. We're going to see this. I think we're going to see this pop up a lot more over the next year or so as more of these items become, you know, as more people buy these things. Especially, I'm seeing after this. Hol it's going to be a big holiday for mm -hmm. these things. Uh, I think so. They're really manufacturers are really going to push the stuff. Uh, we already have um, the news of an upcoming speaker from Samsung that's going to have some of this home automation integration in it. And so, of course, these accessories are going to be lining the shelves. And I don't doubt that we'll see more vulnerabilities actually pop up down the line because the more chances you have to check on these things, the more you can find holes. Right. right, and the important thing is McAfee responsibly disclosed and uh, Belkin is fixing it. And um, I'm going to put in a little plug for HomeKit. Uh, the Wemo recently got HomeKit compatibility, right. which means um, you don't even need to use their app. And the app is part of where that vulnerability comes from. Like someone could mm -hmm. download the app and connect remotely to your plug and therefore to the rest of your network. But that vulnerability doesn't exist in, in HomeKit. And everyone complains about HomeKit and how uh, it's useless and there's only four things that you know are on HomeKit, but it is more It's secure. like that intentionally. Yeah, <laughs> it's just an <laughs> It is intentionally. Well, I live on the wild side. Mm -hmm. uh, I, but you know, I've learned how to live on the wild side. Mm -hmm. I'm properly equipped with all of the things that I need mm -hmm. on that side. But it is, it is safer to be on a secure side. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a little um, Amazon Echo tip, another okay. tip, besides just having uh, Cortana on it. Um, there is a new skill that I discovered that I really like, and it's called AnyPod. So presumably, if you're w watching or listening to this, you are a fan of podcasts. And of course, you probably be. know that you can ask your, <laughs> your device to uh, play a podcast. It's harder uh, to ask your device to fast forward or rewind or subscribe to a podcast. You can subscribe to podcasts on the HomePod. Um, it's more difficult on I the have to Echo say devices. it's very difficult to do on the Google Assistant. Podca the podcast voice interface and voice navigation interface is just not there. Um, I usually just manually cast it and then I use voice controls after the fact. It's very finicky. Mm -hmm. It's not the smoothest experience. Yeah, and I mean, I uh, listen to the Flash Briefing, which is like little brief things from all of the content creators that I like, including Twit. Yes. And um, that has gotten better because it recognizes my voice and it won't replay mm -hmm. the ones that I've already heard. Um, but in terms of podcasts, like I, I like to fast forward through stuff. I like to rewind if I miss something yeah, and hear same. it again. And so this is called Any Pod, and it's just a, a skill that you can enable. It's free, obviously, as all the skills are. And um, you can just say, Echo, open any pod. Any pod at your service. Would you like to resume playing Tech News Weekly? No. So it knew that I was playing that before. Uh, any pod play know-how. 
I think you're looking for what you know podcast. Nope. Do you want to play it? <laughs> no, play know how. Now play know how. On this episode, KH395, IOT for the Enterprise. Ooh, hey, it's us. Mm-hmm. And then you could say, Echo, ask any pod to fast forward five minutes. We actually started off this That's episode my voice. About the that we <laughs> Echo, out ask what? any pod to rewind 30 seconds. Beings from overseas all the time because I've had to open up off site so our folks can manage the and then, remotely. Echo, and subscribe to the show. Amazon Music Unlimited lets you play tens of millions of songs on its Echo Dot. It's <laughs> we got some, have we told you about the good news of Amazon Music? Should I sign you up? No. Don't. Okay. Please. You can sign up anytime by saying, sign up for Amazon Music Unlimited. Nobody asked you for that. Echo. Echo. Echo, stop. Echo, ask any pod to subscribe to the Material Podcast. I don't think she... <laughs> Echo, ask any pod to play the Material Podcast. Let's see if this works. I think you're looking for Material. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Now playing Material 164. Oh, nice. A slice of Android pie. Nice! Hey, you have, you that have worked. An Echo. And you can do that right to stop it i guess so and then yeah and then if you press that again will it play i don't know Mm. yes echo ask any pod to subscribe to this podcast i think you're looking for this podcast will kill you you (laughs) whoa (laughs) echo stop while you're ahead Thank you. My podcast with Andy and Notco will not kill you. <laughs> I promise you that. Uh, so then once you subscribe, you can play all, you just ask it yes. to play all your podcasts. Um, can I offer I a similar, for why'd you push no, 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 no. <laughs> can, I, can, can I offer a similar little tip for Google Assistant yes, folks? Yes, please so, do. So along the lines of this, if you are looking to enable some other things of things you don't have in your house. So you want to do, do some new things with the Assistant, but you don't have like new devices in your house. You don't need to get new devices. There are actually just skills like on uh, the Echo devices. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do is you can go to assistant.google.com backslash explore, type in the name of a service, or you know, maybe maybe you want like a dictionary uh, app of some sort on the Google Assistant for your kids to use. You could search for that in the search engine and then uh, it will tell you what works which devices it works with, which Google Assistant devices it works with, and how you can activate it, and the different commands to use. So I've mentioned that tip before, but I just want to put it out there because it's great. <laughs> it's great to have that in your back pocket when you're like, what can I do with this device? Oh, I don't know that one. I know you don't. You muted her. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's my best And you know what? When you get really frustrated, Again, we've told you before, just unplug it. Just unplug it. It doesn't have to be plugged in just because you own it. That's true. It really doesn't. Mm-hmm. That's What was weird is I exactly pressed the mute button and it kept listening. Okay, uh, we have an email. We have an email. Yes, and it is on this topic. Yes, it is. Um, ben writes, when the Echo first came out, I jumped the gun and bought the first generation Echo. We also have the second generation Dot. I have been seeing that the second generation Echo says it is a hub. Now I don't have any home automation devices yet and I haven't gotten a chance to experiment. Can I control Wi-Fi devices with like the Wemo smart plug or a non-hue light bulb from the first generation Echo. I also have an Apple TV, which I plan to experiment with as well. Sorry all over the place, but I am confused with this home, with the home automation options and device compatibility. Yes. As are we all. Yes, so there's only, so only one of the Amazon Echoes is actually capable of being a full-blown smart home hub in that way, and that's the Echo Show Plus, uh, which comes with Zigbee connectivity, so you can connect things like Philips Hue bulbs and anything that might require that particular hub. But you don't need that. You don't need 
again, you don't need a hub. And uh, if you want to go back a couple episodes ago, we actually have a great little primer on whether you need a hub for which devices and things of the sort. Uh, but if you do have an Echo, you can use it kind of as a hub. So a lot of companies now are calling the smart speakers hub-like because you can do home automation through the apps that come with your smart speaker. So through the app for your Amazon Echo, or if you're on a Google Home, through the Google Home app, um, or for Cortana, through the Cortana app, and you would set all of those things up, and then that would be the interface for you to interact with those devices. I have just one thing. You said the Echo Show Hub, but it's just the Echo, the Echo Show Plus. It's Excuse just me, the Echo, the Echo Plus. Show, no, 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 the Echo Plus. Yeah, yes. Echo, just the Echo Plus. The Echo Show is the one with the screen, and that one doesn't have a hub. There are a lot of Echoes <laughs> out there, to be fair. Yes. Um, sometimes. We lose track of the names because mm -hmm. there's a lot of them. Uh, but it is the Echo Plus that has the Zigbee functionality. And of course, read the specs before you add that thing to your cart because it will say there. That's mm -hmm. the one. And oftentimes, Amazon will also sell it as a bundle. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, and then uh, you also said that you have the newest Apple TV, which will also work as mm -hmm. a hub. Um, the uh, iPad works as a hub, the Apple TV works as a hub. If you have an iPhone, if you have any iOS device that's just sitting at home, you can. that's how you can remotely a control. Hub. Yeah, the hub is what you need most often to remotely control mm -hmm. things um, when you're, you're not at home. So like I have my lock that's connected um, using the Apple TV as a hub. And it's not like you just need to designate one thing as the hub. Like it just sort of will take all anything that you have that's an iOS device that you have already asked, and it'll just use that. Also worth mentioning is that uh, not every one of these apps will allow you to individually control those devices. So if you do have plugs or smart plugs and smart bulbs throughout the house, an app like the Google Home app will not let you manually control it. You will have to go into the respective apps. You can only control it through voice commands. So what I like to suggest is if you're, when you're feeling more brave to go out and try some of those third-party apps that we mentioned before, like You Know Me and Stringify and even Yeti, which is perfect for new beginners to the home automation scene. So it really is just about experimenting and having fun with it, honestly. I, I have so much fun automating this stuff, and that's kind of why I got into it. And we are going to talk about a new device that you have that is also a hub, um, the Samsung Smart Things mm -hmm. Hub. And we're going to set it up live. But first, I want to take yes. a minute before we do that, but before first. we delve into the live demo, I want to thank uh, ExpressVPN because they are uh, the sponsor of this episode of Know How. And as we've already talked about security, we've already talked about how important it is, a VPN is super important if you're going to be delving into the IoT world. And I love ExpressVPN. You can use it on your router, you can use it on your iPad, you can use it um, anywhere, really. Um, this, uh, I'm going to talk about the way that um, ExpressVPN works on your router because, as you know, you, all these IoT devices devices are connected to your router. So your thermostat or your refrigerator or all this kind of thing, they, they, they're, they're increasing convenience, but this comes at a price. And I'm not just talking about all the expenses to buy these things. An unprotected IoT device is, as we've talked about so many times, a gold mine for hackers. Many devices were not built with security in mind. As we've said, sometimes you'll go on Amazon and you'll just buy the first thing and it's not secure, but you can protect yourself with ExpressVPN, the app for routers. ExpressVPN runs a secure VPN directly on your router. It encrypts internet data for every device that is on your home network. So we talked about Wemo before. You're connecting all these things to devices, even devices that you know, they're all connected to your network. They're all connected. If you have ExpressVPN running on your router, you can have a peace of mind. ExpressVPN is the only VPN provider that I personally trust with protecting all of my devices. I have it on my home router now, and I just feel a little calmer about everything that I connect. The ExpressVPN app for routers is super easy to set up. You can also purchase a router with the firmware pre-installed. So this is great. I know a lot of you are the tech support for your parents and your other family, your friends, maybe your kids, and uh, you can get them, if they don't want to set this all up and you don't want to set it up for them, you can get them a, a router with the ExpressVPN firmware already 
installed. Every device gets ExpressVPN protection the moment it connects to your router, so there's no lag time there. And ExpressVPN subscription also comes with apps for computers, like I said, for smartphones, for your iPad, for your Android phone, for your tablet. You can have on-the-go protection. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data, and then it hides your public IP address. And get this, it costs less than $7 a month. That's not a lot for your peace of mind. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free with a one-year package. If you want that deal, which is a very good deal, go to expressvpn.com slash knowhow. That's expressvpn.com slash knowhow and you get three months free with a one-year package. Go to expressvpn.com slash knowhow to learn more and make sure you do slash knowhow so they know that we sent you to them. And we thank ExpressVPN for their support of knowhow. All right, what do you got here? What do I have? So this is the Samsung Smart Things Hub. And if you're watching this live, you get to watch us live set this up. If you're not watching it live, you get to miss all the fun. <laughs> You, you get you to lose. wonder why you saw us you crying you when lose. you. Uh, so the thing about this Samsung Smart Things Hub, this is the this is the current gen that you'll be able to find out at Best Buy pretty easily. There's a new one that was just announced August 13th, and that one actually has Wi-Fi control, which is or rather it connects wirelessly through, to your modem uh, or to your router in your house, which is nice and easy compared to this one, which requires that you hardwire into your router. So uh, I'm gonna take a second to go offline and plug this in and then we'll be right back and then we'll show you the process. Okay. Great. Okay, so I just went off camera and installed the SmartThings hub in a corner over there near the router because it has to be hardwired into the router. And I also put four AA batteries in there, which it comes with because those are the backup batteries and you won't, the unit won't even turn on until you do that. So that's all set up over there. But I'm gonna show you how to set up an outlet through the SmartThings app. So if we go over here to this Galaxy S9 device right over here, you'll see this is the SmartThings app that we have here on display. So uh, earlier in my SmartThings life, I was testing the ADT hub, which we mentioned two weeks ago mm -hmm. in our smart security, DIY security episode. Uh, that's offline, so let's pretend that doesn't exist, okay? But here we go is the add device. So we are gonna add a hub or try to anyway. So your phone, the phone is on the same mm -hmm. network as the hub is connected to. Yes, uh, and oftentimes this doesn't work as I want it to. So what I do is I'll go in here and select Wi-Fi hub and then select what I'm hooking up. And I need to see the model number of this. Oh, so there's... Like, do we have another one in the studio? Is that possible? Or no, 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 that's just the listing because oh. you're adding it manually. Oh, oh, I don't like to do that. I'm gonna just try this one. I okay. think this is the right one. Connect your hub, I did. Okay. And to your welcome code below. Okay, so now it says it's registering, that's good. Yeah, it's on. This is the time I usually crack open a beer. Although sometimes that's not uh, as effective. Uh-oh. It is never smooth sailing setting these things up. Mm -hmm. It always is like this. That's why we do it in our pajamas. We, we do it with beer. We mm -hmm. just, it, it is a process. I would much rather put together a PC parts and all <laughs> set up. IoT things. Well, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it's like you'll do it and it doesn't work and there's no reason. Exactly, because at least with again. like a PC, I know like I can plug, unplug and plug things back in to like figure out what's working. With IoT, it's not that easy. It's not mm -hmm. that like cut and dry. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, you know. Uh, so this is not working. Okay, that's fine. Do you want to keep trying? Yeah, I'm going to keep trying. I think IoT is sort of the definition of insanity. Like, you know, the definition is you keep, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I have noticed that sometimes that works. Mm -hmm. Like you just do the same thing and then finally it just... Um, I'm gonna try actually downloading another app because this is the stock SmartThings app that came. Oh. So, 
And Samsung is known for having way too many Smart Things apps. Yeah, it's. I think it's because it's the wrong Samsung app. Oh. I'm gonna try it with Smart Things Classic. Ooh, Smart Things Classic. Yeah, and so this is a very, very um, confusing thing. Is that there is a Samsung Samsung Connect app and a Samsung Smart Things app. And so, depending on the one you download, and so it's possible that's why that's not working, which makes me wonder why is this still coming in? Why is this why still? Why didn't show up? Yeah. Yeah. Connect your hub. All right. Continue. Set up your location. Grant location permissions. Yes. So, as you see here, these are Megan's hands because the Smart Things hub, uh, my account was already registered to another hub, and that is just an absolute um, headache to try and deal with as we are on the air right now. So, thankfully, Megan has signed up for a Samsung account. Now you have a Samsung account, by the way. Okay, Enjoy. great. Should I uh, allow it? To Go ahead, see? keep allowing. Oh. And so, all those allow dialogues are Android specific. So, do not worry about that if you are on an iPhone device oh. that's just that's specific to the Android operating system. It might have asked okay. my location. It asked my, it, I said, yes. this is my location. All right, look how quick. And this look, it's is... Megan Maroney's Android. What? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to give you this for my lose phone okay. with you afterward. Battery uh, optimization. This is, this is just, okay. just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay, can we add a thing? Add yeah, a thing? let's add a thing. Yay! A All thing. right, we're adding a thing. So, ladies and folks, under here I've got a Samsung Smart Things plug installed. Oh, so look, I'm it turning saw on it. It saw it. the outlet right now. <laughs> I just turned it on. So go ahead and tap that outlet. Tap that outlet. What do we name it? Uh, what would you like to name it? Uh, uh, princess? Yes, let's name it Princess. I love it. <laughs> Done. Okay. Uh-oh. What? Okay. Yeah. Device is found. Yeah. Save. Oh, save. <laughs> oh, save. Save. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Princess is on right now. I don't know why it says off. Okay. Oh, yeah, it works. We're doing all this from the app. So the nice thing about the Smart Things app, and this is one reason that I would suggest the Smart Things ecosystem to somebody who's new to home automation, is because when it does work perfectly, it's a very smooth experience. And so we have on and off controls right here from the Smart Things app. I don't have to reach under to touch God the forbid button. We have to, to yeah. turn the switch. I mean, like a yes, cave but, person. But the whole, <laughs> but the whole point of this is that you would link up your Smart Things account and your Google Home app or your app, and then you'd be able to do all of this through voice commands. Mm -hmm. And so that's where like the pièce de résistance is. Mm -hmm. I hope I used that right. I never took French. <sighs> it's such a uh, feeling of. Uh, accomplishment. It really is. It really is, which is why, which is honestly why I like to empower people with this sort of information because even just getting this light to turn on and off. <laughs> I mean, hello, dopamine going up right now. One more Samsung. One thing. more Samsung thing. thing. We have to. Act, we're actually going to do a whole unboxing. Mm. That looks like the mesh router that I have. Okay, so let me tell you about this while Megan shows it off on camera, okay? okay? Before we open it and all of that fun stuff. So this is actually the second generation Samsung mesh Wi-Fi device. It's called, this is called SmartThings Wi-Fi. The one that Samsung launched last year was called the Samsung Connect Home. So that's the first gen. This is the second gen. Think about it that way. In terms of design, not too much differentiation from the last version of this mesh Wi-Fi. Still like this little, you know, white puck shape. Um, they are actually smaller nodes than the Google Wi-Fi, for instance. They're about the size of the Eros, which is nice. They're not, you know, they don't take up too much space. Eros is a Twit sponsor, by the way. Eros is a Twit sponsor. Uh, so this is mesh w networking, and it's got mesh networking tech from Plume built into it. And so a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, People have said that part of the reason is probably because Plume is known for its abilities to smartly switch networks mm -hmm. and things of the sort. And so the idea was 
and actually we're going to turn off this light. And the idea was that um, by having another company do that, by outsourcing that, Samsung would be getting sort of an edge versus having to do all of that configuration on its own. Because the nice thing about mesh Wi-Fi routing is that it will automatically route everything for you the way it should be so that you're getting optimal network traffic, that things are working at the speed they're supposed to, and so that everything is getting some sort of internet connection in your house. And so I have to say the Connect Home, last year's Samsung Connect Home, they were okay at the smart things part because, again, the kicker, which I probably should have started out with, is that this has smart things integration in it, which is why it's so interesting, is because it, it, it puts in all of these oh, smart home smarts inside of the mesh Wi-Fi, which you would do anyway. So that right? thing that we just set up, like... You don't need that. You don't even need you to do that. You don't even need that. All that trouble we just You would went buy to. this instead. And so this has both Zigbee and Z-Wave built in. It costs... Uh, the three-pack this here is 280 so you're getting, you know, these three nodes that you're going to put around the house wherever you want. And uh, if you want to buy just one, that's $120. It's not actually much more than this SmartThings hub. Hovers around $70, $80 usually in the discount range. There is another hub coming out, which I had mentioned earlier. That one is also going to sell for $70. That's the wireless kind. But let's, let's unbox this really quick. I just, I haven't had... A chance to test it. It's going to be something that I'm going to be installing in my house. I'm going to be doing my own smart things configurations with this. I kind of want to really put it to the test this year since last year we were kind of new to it. Um, and, you know, Samsung obviously really wants a big piece of this pie. So, do we have a knife? Do we have a knife? Because I don't um, know if my nails. There are is gonna... an, it, there is an iPhone app or an Android app on there. There are, yes, so. this is both. This is Samsung going for everyone. Mm -hmm. And what's actually interesting to know is it's the same SmartThings app that oh, we are using. Us a knife, so we're using a USB cable. Yeah. Nice. The micro USB. <laughs> or is that C? No, that's it's micro. Micro, micro USB is the one with a little bit of. It's not really working as well as I. Where's John? Got it. Just throw a knife at me. <laughs> oh, wow. They really sealed this. Uh, so this has been unboxed, mm -hmm. which we went to go find a knife off camera. Thank you to everyone who showed up with knives. A lot of box cutters in this building, by the mm -hmm. way. So this is what it looks like. This is how big it is. It, I mean, it's very cute. It's very light. It's got the, the in and the out Ethernet on the back, little AC port. I have a feeling these light up blue in the Samsung sign signature blue color, mm -hmm. blue shade. And I'm going to connect these and just connect that outlet that you saw us connect earlier today, connect some other stuff that I have on. There's also some new sensors that Samsung released along with this. So this is gonna be this is gonna be Samsung's big year to try and just really because last year they did it kind of quietly and I feel like this year it's gonna be a real a real kicker. So do you have the Google Mesh Wi-Fi now at your I house? do. I do. I, I notice it doesn't always work great because sometimes when we're having video calls, um, you have no internet. Yes, that's because I work at the back of the house okay. and there's no nodes upstairs. So this might cover more? No, oh, it oh, would okay. do the same. Oh, okay. it, would, it would be the same in my house. How it's do you just... have spaces with no internet? How do you live like that? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say though, the nice thing about this is I can actually tack this on already to yeah. my Google Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So I can, I'm gonna actually add this in addition and see how that works. I'm gonna see if it covers those dead zones in Should the house. Should we see what else is in the box? I presume there's other stuff in the box. Yeah, there is, and look at this nice little pool oh, tab. Wow, nice. industrial packaging mm -hmm. design. I like that. Oh, look at that. You've got a little getting started. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I love it when I open a package and it's like clearly made for consumers. Mm -hmm. Like I appreciate that. Ah, yes, we've got the large Samsung branding on the power brick. These power bricks, too big. They were really big on the Connect Home as well. Um, the Google Wi-Fi has slightly big power bricks as well, which can be really annoying because they take up so much room. And when you have a double outlet in the living room, I mean, you would like for it not to be taken up. It's only so much. Quick start guide, Ethernet cable. This is this is gonna be. This is gonna be. Look how nicely. Mm -hmm. Look how nicely. It's just like perfectly mm -hmm. uniformly. Kudos on the packaging design. Mm -hmm. I'll have more to say on that in the coming weeks. I'll have an article probably out about it. Excellent. 
Uh, and now I guess it's time for our uh, IoT. What? what? <laughs> Here's a thing, a little item I got on uh, Amazon, um, which is it's an iHome. It's in here. That's it's a spot for Are your. Are you dots. kidding me? <laughs> so this is. Uh, it's not a cup holder. No, it, well, you could probably put it. Could be for a cup holder, okay. but it's for your Echo Dot. It's from iHome, which you know has been making products. I used to charge, charge my iPod with an iHome um, and connect it to speakers. So it um, also will charge your your Echo Dot so that you can then make it portable and carry it around with you. Um, and oh, you lights. can carry it around in a little lit up cauldron. Yes. Hey, it would work for Halloween. You could carry it around and yes. have scary sounds coming out of it and then you can go to me like hey, would you like to go and do my crystal ball and then it can like that is a great yes uh great for uh, Halloween Halloween content. Costume. and it you can hook um a bluetooth up to it so if you want to you just use it as a regular bluetooth speaker you can do that so you open up the back here and um there's the plug for your uh echo dot so it's not exactly easy to do but i'm gonna just plug that in. Yeah, you know, I appreciate the thought mm -hmm. that of like let us give you this ability. Um, I will say, watching you do this right now pains me, <laughs> and it, I'm really glad you don't have long nails because I feel like this would be very difficult for you. Yeah, and it's not cheap either. It's like fifty seven dollars. Fifty. That's a whole nother dot. Fifty three dollars. That's another dot. That's two dots on Prime Day. Yeah. Um, and I have to say that the speakers are not amazing either. In fact, they're quite bad. So, ooh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so I could say, but I could see this like like giving it to a teen. Yeah, yeah, that and was then the teen would be like, idea. "Where's that's my?" Why I got beats? it. So yeah, um, and now it has to charge back up. But I'll I'll let you listen to the speakers a little bit. Um, and why aren't the colors there? Yeah, I could adjust the colors. I could, and then I when it once it starts. Once it boots up, I can say echo, echo, echo. Not Echo the Dolphin, which was a great series of Sega Genesis games in the early 90s. Echo the Dolphin 2 in particular, The Tides of Time, was a very difficult game to play. Hmm. Boy, did I get frustrated. <sighs> she only goes off when we don't want her to go off, of course. Echo. 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 Play Fergalicious. Fergalicious by Fergie. So the speaker is not that good. But you're right, the carrying it around. Um, I feel like if I had some wine in my hand, though, I could still get it on. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the. Um, Play Fergalicious. I know. Speak with her by asking me to Cortana. I couldn't find that. Cortana, please play Fergalicious. Fergalicious by Fergie. I couldn't find that on tune. A tune in. Yeah. It's set to tune in. by Fergie. Okay, okay, I got it. Oh, hold on, I got it. Cortana, play KQED FM. All right. Tuning in to KQED FM. Now we can really rock. <laughs> yeah, public radio. <laughs> that sounds beautiful. Memory foam can provide personal. Memory foam. All right, Cortana, stop. Cortana. All right, I think that's it. We've finished our show. In all I hope story. everyone who watched the live stream enjoyed all of the hilarity. You can be back here with us in the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. And we will be live on Thursday with all of these shenanigans. Um, and if you're watching the edited version, that's a reason you should come and watch the live version. Because you're uh, missing out. Yes. And we want to thank uh, RTD for putting up um, with all of the. Mm -hmm. the Today, RTD is for Galicious, also known as Alex Gumpel. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> he might never do it again. Uh, and yeah, thank you to you for watching. Subscribe to the show, twit.tv slash KH. Thank you to Sam Pirtle for coming and being thank in you. our live audience. You're our first audience member, actually, since yeah. we started mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. It's true. Since yeah. we started the season. If you want to be our second <laughs> live audience, tickets to twit.tv. Um, you can come on in and uh, and watch us uh, and giggle along with everything that happens here in the world of IoT. And no, you're not alone. It's all just ridiculous, but in the end, it's all a bunch of fun. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say Cheers. about that. Yeah. Uh, I have coffee. <laughs>